वेलकम टू जपजी साहेब पॉडी ट्वेंटी फोर दिस इज अ वेरी लॉन्ग पॉडी सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड अंत न सिफ्टी कहन न अंत अंत न करने देन न अंत अंत न वेखण सुन न अंत अंत न जप किया मन मंत अंत न जाप कीताकार अंत न जाप पारावार अंत कारण कीटे बिल लाही ताके अंत न पाए जाही एहू अंत न जाने कोई बोता कहिए बोता हुए बड़ा साहिब ऊंचा था हो ऊंचे ऊपर ऊंचा ना हो एवड़ ऊंचा हो वे कोए तिस ऊंचे को जाने सोए जीवड़ आप जाने आप आप नानक नदरी करमी दात It's a beautiful body. It starts with glorifying the awareness, the consciousness, or God, or chidda kasha, or isness, or shunyata, or purnata. Doesn't matter what name you call it. This awareness, this consciousness, God. This is endless. It is infinite. Ant na sifti kahan na ant. Whatever you say about it, it is not sufficient. Rabindranath Tagore was on his deathbed, and somebody asked him, "You must be feeling so complete, dying a successful man." having expressed all your feelings through the 6000 poems that you have written poem songs stories etc rabindranath said no in fact i was just talking to god and telling him how i have been incapable of expressing that which i really wanted to say how i have been unable to tell the world about my deepest feeling about god whatever you say fall short whatever you want to express about god will be infinite yeah that is why the first line is antana sifti kahana na ant whatever you say about god will always fall short why that's because when you unite with god when you become one with that sound of creation when you dissolve into awareness there is no you left there is no i left there when there is no i left how can one express what one becomes you cannot explain that experience you can just be god you cannot express god you can just be the consciousness you cannot elaborately describe consciousness that is why words fail over there have you ever been in a trauma and you suddenly lose words you become speechless that's exactly what happens there you become speechless you cannot see anything you cannot see 
a word about it. It can only be experienced. And Nanak has already given you the way to get there. Surati, a constant remembrance of who is it that is listening? Who is it that is speaking? Who is the one who is knowing whatever is happening? Who am I? Just be aware of awareness and you will get there. All scriptures aim for you to get there. They do their best in describing how to get there, but they always fall short. That is why you do n number of scriptural studies, you attend n number of scriptural classes, but you don't get it. Why? Because it cannot be expressed beyond a point. The intellect cannot go there. The mind cannot go there. Only experience will do the justice. So, experience. Dive into yourself. The next line is, Ant na karne dena na ant. Means his actions are endless. His gifts are endless. Look carefully. Did you make an effort to get to where you are to be able to listen to this? Who is doing all this? Who is the doer? If you look carefully, you will know. There is only one doer and that is God. Endless are his actions. Infinite are his actions. And infinite are his gifts. Everything is a gift. See clearly. See through the eyes of wisdom and then you will know. Whatever you look at is a gift. Even this eyesight itself is a gift. What have I done to deserve eyesight? What have I done to deserve this power of speech to express what I feel? To communicate to you what I am? Who am I? Do I even deserve to have this power of speech? But I have it. It is his gift. It is his gift. He is acting through me. He is speaking through me. He is doing everything. Moment to moment of the day, while working in the kitchen, while buying groceries, while playing with the children, while sitting at the computer in office while speaking with your boss, see that every action is his and everything is a gift. If your heart is full of gratitude, if you are a content person, you will be able to see that everything is a gift. But if you are Wallowing in the pus of discontent, you will not be able to see his actions. You will not be able to see his gifts. As a person matures, he can start recognizing that everything in this universe is a gift of God. Those who are spiritually immature, they cannot see it. This entire creation has a sequential mathematical evolution. It goes from one day to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. It's like clockwork. Seasons never fail to come. The day never fails to become night. 
night never fails to become day. The sun rises in the morning, how it sets in the evening, how automatically after sunrise the birds wake up and start chirping, the flowers bloom. Humans are up and about, insects are up and about, animals are up and about. How when the sun sets, the insects, the animals, the flowers all go back to sleep. Humans take a while, but finally even they surrender. The blind one cannot see God's hand behind all these actions. The blind one asks for proof. It is as if he is stubbornly holding on to his non-belief in God. You are stubbornly holding on to it. You just don't want to see God's hand behind everything. You want to see only your own ego doing everything. Why? Because you know somewhere in your heart, each one of you knows that the moment you see the truth, you will lose it all. You will have to change. You will not be able to do the things which you did earlier. You will not be able to lie. You will not be able to cheat. You will not be able to deceive. You will not be able to harm or hurt. A transformation will be inevitable. And one part of you does not want to transform. It does not want to let go. It is stubbornly holding on. It is that part of you that cannot see God's hand behind every action in this universe including your own actions. When you see the truth, you will understand the real meaning of non-doership. You will understand the real meaning of the statement, there is only one doer. There are three kinds of people. One, who do not believe in God. Nietzsche said, God is dead. But this is just the ego saying that he is boss. The ego wants to rule everything, including this creation. The second type of people are who believe in God, but only out of fear. They fear that something bad will happen if they don't believe in God. So, it is not a real knowing of God. It is a fake belief. The third kind of people are who know God. They don't say, I believe the sun will rise tomorrow. They know the sun will rise tomorrow. Like that only. They don't believe in God, they know God. But by knowing God, you suddenly fall into a vacuum. And you cannot explain that vacuum. You cannot put it in words. You cannot even claim you know it. And at the same time, saying that you don't know it would be a lie. That is why. Buddha would always be silent whenever somebody asked him the question, does God exist? Is there a soul? Who runs this creation? Whenever he was asked such questions, he fell into that same vacuum where you can't say you know and you cannot say you don't know. He went silent. Silence is the only way to communicate the true meaning of God, the true meeting with God. Become silent, meet God. 
अंत न वेखन सुन न अंत इनफाइनाइट इज हिज दर्शन और विजन और यू विल बी एबल टू सी हिम इनफाइनाइटली ऑल द वे टू द होराइजन इज गॉड ही इज इनफाइनाइट सुन न अंत इनफाइनाइट इज दिस सॉन्ग ऑफ गॉड Infinitely will you be able to hear it. Ant na jappe kia man mant. The mystery of his mind cannot be perceived. It is limitless. This is again metaphorical. God does not have a mind, but his mystery cannot be perceived by this little intellect. cannot be known by this intellect if it cannot be known in words how can it be expressed in words that is why i say all scriptures are unsuccessful attempts to express god ant na jape kita kar ant na jape paravar the limits of this universe cannot be perceived and his limits here and beyond cannot be perceived here comes in buddha's story somebody went to buddha and asked him does god exist buddha went silent again the person asked please tell me where can i find god how is god does he exist or does he not exist buddha went silent and the person kept looking at buddha kept looking at his silence something happened to him in that silence tears welled up he bowed down to buddha and he left Ananda Buddha's attendant was confused. He said, "Why didn't you answer him? Why didn't you answer him?" He left with tears in his eyes. He probably thinks that you don't know the answer or he probably didn't understand. He left confused. So Buddha said, "Hold your horses, Ananda. Hold your horses and listen. There are three kinds of horses number 1 you have to really whip this horse very very hard for him to move and keep moving second kind of horse you have to just hit the whip into the air and the whip makes a sound just by the sound of the whip the second horse will start moving and continue moving but there is this third kind of horse he just needs the shadow of the whip and he will start moving this person who came he is the third kind of horse just the shadow of the whip the shadow here is the silence just the silence is sufficient and he will know where to go he was the third kind of horse which kind of horse are you do you understand silence do you connect with the sound of this creation can you just be established in silent awareness you check that is the meaning of the limits cannot be perceived that is why the real enlightened people just go silent they cannot express it and whatever they express will be half baked will be uncooked so they choose to remain silent
अंत कारण के ते बिल्ला ही ताके अंत न पाए जाए ही many many struggle to know him to know his limits but his limits cannot be found so many of us get lost in the world in religion in what saints say in what gurus say in what the priest says in what the scriptures say we keep looking here we keep looking there there are people who are struggling to know god to find that moment of peace to find that moment moment of pure awareness this struggle is seen far and wide but nobody can really find god because really finding god is like finding the ocean once you find the ocean you do not exist anymore when you do not exist anymore you cannot describe what happened who you are there is no i anymore it is just god ai hu ant na jane koi bhota kahiye bhota hoye no one can know these limits the more you say about it there still remains much much more to say words always fall short words always fall short vadda sahib uncha thao uche upar uncha nao great is the master high is his heavenly abode uche upar uncha nao above everything higher than the highest is his name which means his name is higher than him this can be a little difficult to comprehend how can his name be above him here name or naam is simply the sound of the creation omkar this sound of creation is higher than him why because that is the door to him the door we that is the only way that we can know him Umkar is the key that opens the door of God. When you sharpen your awareness to such an extent that you can constantly be dissolved, consumed, engulfed, drenched in the sound of creation, when you reach that highest human potential then you reach god if you miss the sound of creation if you miss this naam then you lose the path to god then whatever you do you will never reach god because there is only one key that opens that door and that is the sound the sound of the creation the naam that is why it is higher than him because it is that which connects us to him that which takes us back home for those who don't understand this the sages the saints came up with the chant of omkar you sit and chant if you cannot understand your mind is completely clogged by thoughts and emotions and ideas and concepts and there's a whirlpool of intellect and mind all around okay then you are completely a person absorbed in the vichara state so only vichar will work for you vichar is thought so then you think of the name omkar you repeat that 
verbally, loudly, so that slowly, slowly the thoughts go away and then you're just drenched in the vibrations of Om, physically and mentally. A point comes where you stop chanting through the lips and you are just silently chanting in the mind. The echo of those vibrations in the mind purify you to such a point that you become absolutely silent within, absolutely quiet. You reach the nirvichar avastha, the thoughtless state and suddenly you become aware of the sound of the creation. You reach home. This is called a japa jap because now you are not chanting anymore. But it is still there. You can constantly hear that sound of creation in the deafening silence of your mind, of nirvichar avastha. That is why this sound, this naam, is above God also. Evad ucha hove koi, tis uche kao jane soi. Only one as great as God, only one as high as God can really know God, can really know his higher state, his lofty state, that exalted state. Only the one who can become God can know God. There is no other shortcut. Intellectually, you cannot know Him. Reading the scriptures, listening to others' talks, you cannot know Him. You can only know Him by being Him. Be God, know God. Jevad ape jane ap ap nanak nadri karmi dat. Only he himself is great. He himself knows himself. To know God, we have to be God. To know awareness, we have to withdraw from the objects of awareness and just relax within, collapse within. And just be, just be. When you are in awareness, you understand that exalted state. When you are not in awareness, it doesn't matter what you read, what others say. You will not be able to know awareness. So, to know awareness, be awareness. To know God, be God. And the last line of this body is that by his glance of grace, he bestows blessings on us. This has been misinterpreted and misunderstood by many, many devotees. They think that only by the grace of God will I get there. Only by his blessings will I get there. Then why do I need to make the effort? Then they become lazy. Then they give up effort. And they think that they will get there without any effort. This is a wrong understanding. There are two paths. One is the path of Sankalpa where you make an effort, Patanjali's path, Mahavir's path, Buddha's path, are all paths of effort. You make an effort, be in awareness, constantly remember to be in awareness and let go of cravings. Relax from the feverishness of craving again and again and again and you will get there. This is the path of Sankalpa. The other is the path of Samarpan, Meera's path, 
कबीर स्पात चैतन्य महाप्रभु स्पात ऑल द पाथ्स ऑफ डिवोशन कम अंडर समर्पण दैट यू कंप्लीटली सरेंडर योर ईगो कंप्लीटली सरेंडर योर ईगो ऑन द पाथ ऑफ संकल्प the obstacle can be the ego see i am making an effort on the path of samarpan laziness becomes the obstacle where you say oh let me surrender by god's grace it will happen i do not need to make an effort both the paths have their downfalls the intelligent one is the one who does sankalpa and samarpan you make your effort and surrender your doership surrender your ego grace is flowing anyways on all of us equally on a saint and a terrorist equally on a yogi who is making an effort and on the murderer who is going out to kill people grace is like the sun's rays it does not discriminate grace is like the rain it does not discriminate then why is it that some of us reach there by grace and some of us don't it simply depends on your patra patra means your ability to absorb this knowledge implement it and dissolve into awareness that is called your ability or patrata material world abilities are different the spiritual world ability is called patrata patra in sanskrit also means a vessel if your vessel is turned the correct way up it will collect the rain water if your patra is wholesome if you are ready to absorb the knowledge if you are ready to make the effort and at the same time you are ready to surrender the ego your patra is up grace is flowing you are collecting the grace do you get it and that is why such a person becomes a saint but if your patra is upside down how much ever grace flows you will not be able to collect the grace do you get it in this case there is no effort there is no surrender of ego both these things are lacking sankalpa is also lacking samarpan is also lacking patra is turned upside down and therefore it fails to collect grace and such a person can only move towards the wrong side you check are you a patra or are you an apatra are you able to collect grace or are you unable to collect grace grace is flowing equally on me and you we both have the potential to get there provided you implement both sankalpa that is effort and samarpan surrendering the doership the ego you will definitely reach home see you next week